So I wanted to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page with if statements. And so remember when you go into Visual Studio uh, and you do new project, you will come in here and you will have templates. And of course you can expand and collapse these. We're doing Visual Basic Windows, Windows Form Application, and we'll click OK. And so an if statement allows your code to make some very basic decisions and it can alter the code that's executed, meaning normally the code is executed from the, the top of the code to the bottom sequentially in order one line to the next to the next, but sometimes you need only certain code to execute and it depends on some condition. So an if statement will give you the ability to say if some condition is true then do these lines of code otherwise do other lines of code. So in the videos that I sent you you should have gotten the uh, the impression where it should have come across that you can alter code execution and make decisions. Generally we use mathematical um, variables when we're doing that and we can compare them with the equal sign, the greater than sign, the less than sign, greater than equals, less than equals, and then exclamation point equals which is not equals. So we're going to, if this starts up shortly here, I will show you some different examples of if statements and then you can take the quiz on those. We're also going to start the nine weeks project. Uh, I'm giving you some uh, flexibility on that this time. I've had some people give me some suggestions of things they want to work on. So whatever you do is probably going to involve some if statements. And so here we have our basic form window. Over here I have my toolbox and I can expand or collapse here. And we'll give the computer a second to catch up. So generally, a lot of times you will have your code behind a button. And so you'll have if statements behind a button or in form load. That's the most common places for them to be. And so eventually the toolbox caught up and here are all of my items. So I'm going to double click a button and that should put it on the form. You can also drag and drop. And so if I want to get to the code window, I click once on the button to focus on it. Remember the little white tabs will let you know that you are actually truly working with the button. You're focused on that. The cursor is selected that. So I'm going to double click that and eventually my code window will open up and we can see that I am behind button one's click event, meaning this is the code that will fire off when button one is clicked. Of course you could go to the properties and change the name of button one and the caption and all of that. So a basic if statement, well first of all let's start out by creating a variable. If you remember that's just a a location in memory that you control. So I'm going to just give it a basic name x. I'm going to make it an integer. I'm going to do another variable named y. Make it an integer so that I have something to compare in my if statement. So I'm going to say if x equals 18 and y equals 21. Now I can compare these two values and make some decisions. So I can say if x equals y, if x and y are the same number, then there's lots of things I can do. I can put out a message box x and y are equal, for example. And let's say I want to have another variable. I'm going to call it sum. I'm going to start it out at zero. So if they're equal, I am going to just give a message box. Perhaps I might want to say sum equals x plus y, for example. 
and that's great and as long as they're equal something will happen but if I ran this code right now they are not the same x is 18 y is 21 so this is not true 21 and 18 are not equal so nothing would happen if I ran the code and clicked the button these lines of code would not execute because that condition 18 equals 21 is not true so I can do another check this is the same if statement so if the first condition is not true I can say well if X is greater than Y then and remember the words in blue are keywords that you always type then I can do another message box X is greater than Y and maybe I just want to set my maybe I want to just leave the well some doesn't really make sense here I was just showing you some examples there but then I could also do else if X is less than Y then and of course I can just change my message box a little bit Now I can always put a default condition, something that if none of these is true, which doesn't make sense in this case, but sometimes you need it, I can just say there must have been an error, there must be bad data, something's off. So if I were to run this now, x is less than y, I would get x is less than y popping up in the message box. If I set them equal, I would get the first one only and it would ignore all the rest of them and if I made X larger than Y what happens is the compiler says that's not true where's the next part of the cell statement is X greater than Y yes that's true print that out now skip to the end so that's how an if statement only executes specific lines based on whether or not some condition is true so hopefully that helps you a little bit and that will help you get through the quiz on if statements. For those who are who have taken the quiz, then what I would like for you to do today is to get your project idea finalized. Most of you sent me an email the, that on the project. So get your project idea finalized and then I need you to go out and do a little bit of research. If you're going to write uh, a game of Jeopardy, then what I need you to do is sit down and think about how you're going to design the screen. What type of graphics you're going to have. Are you going to have buttons on there? Are you going to have labels that give the user feedback if their guess is their answer is correct or not? How are you going to populate the questions? Are you going to have some variables to hold those? Uh, there's, or we can do a text file that your program reads in. There's a couple of ways to do that. So if you have taken the quiz after you've watched this review, I want you to give me um, maybe in paint or something layout very roughly it doesn't have to be exact how you're going to have your screen look and then I would like a little um, brainstorming session on your end with questions like if you're doing Jeopardy how am I going to get the questions and answers set up without me typing hundreds of questions in so that would be a question for me um, how am I going to alternate between player and computer so I need questions from you things that you need help on I need you to sort of brainstorm and tell me what you already know like I'm if you know that you can use a random number to decide which player goes first and that's what you're going to do like flipping a coin let me know that so what I'm looking for is some type of beginning thought process on what my form is going to look like. I know I'm going to do uh, keeping score with variables, for example, but how am I going to set up all my questions? So I need to see what you think you need help with, what you think you've got um, ready to go in your mind on how you're going to do things so we can kind of plan from there. And I would like to see through paint or somehow some graphic program sort of how you envision your form being set up and you can put some little graphics in there you can just indicate I'm gonna have pictures here 
or something like that, um, then email that to me by the end of class today if possible. If you have not yet taken the quiz, you need to take the quiz as soon as possible and get that back to me. Then you need to think about for your nine weeks project something that's doable within a few weeks that I can help you with that you can do some on your own. So some people are doing Jeopardy, there was an idea somebody had to do Wheel of Fortune, uh, a very, very basic poker game. Uh, with a couple of players where we just check the hands, maybe a five card draw kind of game, nothing too complicated if you're going to do something like that. Um, I think there was a, somebody wanted to do Pong. So you need to come up with an idea of something that you can do and let me help you decide if it's too much or if there's a way that we can just make sure it's just the right amount of work for the time that's left. And I want to spend some more time this week. We're going to look more at if statements and probably a little bit at loops. And I want to plan on having a test on Friday on if statements, uh, variables, and potentially loops. So let's use our time wisely in class and uh, we'll go from there.